The Falcon 9 rocket is on internal power. Everything is proceeding normally. Weather is go. The SpaceX launch team is working no technical issues at this time. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. Standing by for verification that the autonomous the flight termination system. Ready for launch. And we have confirmation. Ready for launch. AFTS is ready for launch. T minus one minute and counting. BC and DC verify F9 and Dragon are in startup. F9 is in startup. Dragon is in startup. Falcon 9 and Dragon are in startup. Stage 2 is pressing for flight. Flight computer is. LD verify go for launch. Go for launch. Launch Director Mike Taylor giving a go for launch. Terminal count coming up at T minus 30 seconds. 30. Standing by for the pad deluge water system activation at T minus 18 seconds. T minus 20. Stage one locks, pressing for flight. Minus 10. Five, four, three, two, one. And liftoff. The 100th liftoff from Launch Pad 39A as Falcon and Dragon take flight to the International Space Station. First stage propulsion nominal. Space Station. One minute into flight. Falcon 9 is going transonic at this time. Standing by for maximum dynamic pressure. About one minute away from the first stage engine cutoff and the begin of the boost back burn. And that chill started. NASA television will be showing both the second stage carrying Dragon to orbit and portions of the return of the Falcon 9 first stage engine to landing zone one at nearby Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Less than 30 seconds away from Miko, main engine cutoff. We have Miko 1. And we have Stage Miko 1 as planned. Stage separation confirmed. You can see the stage separation, first stage departing, the second stage engine igniting. Impact condition confirmed. Stage one boost back burn has started. Stage two on the left, stage one on the right. Falcon 9 first stage heading back toward Earth. Second stage continuing on its way to the International Space Station. The nose cone protecting Dragon will be jettisoned in five seconds. Stage two propulsion nominal.
Stage one boost back burn shut down. And as planned, the first stage boost back burn has shut down. Three minutes, 35 seconds into flight. And we're looking at the first stage making its return on the left of the uh, NASA television screen. Falcon 9 second stage engine continues to burn. Acquisition of signal of Bermuda. Second stage will continue to burn for another five minutes, carrying the Dragon spacecraft into its preliminary orbit. In about two minutes, the first stage uh, entry burn will begin. That's a burn of about 14 seconds, bringing the uh, Falcon 9 first stage engine nominal. back toward Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Second stage engine performance continues to be good. Four minutes, 45 seconds into flight. Position in New Hampshire. SpaceX New Hampshire tracking site now tracking the uh, travels of the second stage as the first stage continues its descent. About 45 seconds away from the first stage entry burn, second stage continues to perform normally. Five minutes, 45 seconds into flight. Stage one entry burn starting. And you can see the stage one entry burn underway. Everything continues to go well. Stage two, carrying the Dragon spacecraft stage to orbit. Stage one entry burn shut down. And we have shut down as planned. Six minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Stage one AFTS has saved. Stage one is transonic. Stage one is flying back toward stage Earth. One landing burn starting. Landing burn is starting for stage one. Seven minutes, 15 seconds into flight. Everything continues well with the flight of the second stage in Dragon. For those in the area, there will be a loud sonic boom that will occur right about the time of landing, which is expected. The length of time that the sonic boom took to reach Earth. Stage one landing legs deploying. Landing legs have deployed. And the first stage is back, just miles away from its launch point. Stage one engines have shut down. Stage one engines have shut down. LZ-1, the Falcon has landed. Landing operators proceed with initial safing per procedure 11.100. Section three on LZ-1 net. Everything going according to plan, eight minutes into flight. About a minute away from second stage engine cutoff. Stage two propulsion remains nominal.
Eight minutes, 30 seconds into the flight and about 30 seconds away from the second stage engine cutoff. That'll be followed about a minute later by the Dragon spacecraft separation. OSM boosters landed. Stage two AFTS has saved. Standing by for engine cutoff. Seco one. Seco one as the glow of that MVAC D engine fades. Now the next major milestone now that second stage has stopped burning is separation from Dragon itself. It was burning for about six and a half minutes to get us into the orbit that we need to to fire our pyrotechnic devices and gently push Dragon away so that it as a self-sustaining vehicle can continue on to the International Space Station of its own accord. So let's listen in for, for separation of Dragon from second stage here in a moment. stage separating as Dragon continues solo onto its mission to traverse over the next 60, 64 hours or so to the International Space Station. Now it's worth reiterating what Dragon's going to be doing over the next few hours. The very first thing we do now that we are separated is we prime the propulsion system. This is when we open those pressurant valves and enable us to fire our propellants so that we can readjust and orient our position out in space. We need to do that so that we can point at the tracking and data relay satellite system first. Once we acquire those ground stations, we can confirm communication with Dragon, which opens the door for all of the events that follow. Now, after we establish TDRIS, we do an event called Solar Array Deployment. As Tom mentioned earlier, the solar arrays unfurl from the side of the trunk after their fairings are released. They are doing that so that we can recharge from energy harvested from the sun so that our onboard batteries will last this multi-day journey up to the space station. That solar ray deployment occurs at about T plus 10, 11, 12 minutes or so, so that will come up soon, and we will provide coverage of that deployment. Now, after we close out the webcast, a few events will happen thereafter, and they are worth noting, and that is the opening of the GNC bay door next at about T plus two hours. GNC, as Lauren mentioned, stands for Guidance, Navigation, and Control, and that bay houses all of our sensors that we need for close proximity ops with the International Space Station. LIDARs, laser detection and ranging, thermal imagers, GPS units, star trackers, etc., so that Dragon continually knows both where it is and how it's oriented. That's very important once we get close to the ISS. Now, after that GNC bay door opens at about T plus two hours, we then begin those slew of burns, the height adjusts and the co-liptic burns that we need to go all the way up to the International Space Station as we inch closer and closer along that staircase to the International Space Station. Once we're there, we berth, we get captured, the astronauts offload all the cargo, we stay up there for about a month, and then we return about a month later with return cargo, splash down with attempts to refly that same Dragon again later at some point. Now we're coming up on solar ray deploy, that event that I mentioned a few moments ago, so let's watch that now. And there you have it. As the wings of Dragon extend slowly out from the passive springs from the trunk so that we can harvest energy from the sun, over the next two and a half days as we journey up to the space station. It has been a wonderful timeline so far for this yeah, very LOS first reflown Dragon. Still good Best of luck and continue on to your mission to the International Space Station.